<laughs> Doug. Yes, sir. Welcome to the Avery Show Show, better known as Ass. That's- <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> now, we've known each other for a while, and you've been on a couple projects that we did a while back, diving on the boat, not the boat. my boat, but the boat. the boat. We'll get that clear. We'll get that clear. I understand. We kind of met in a roundabout interesting way, and I met your other friend in kind of a roundabout interesting way. Adley Colson. Yes. Adley used to live down to the bottom of the hill from me, and he had a little diver plaque there, and I asked him, I says, Adley, what do you do? He says, I'm a diver, and that's about, just about as far as it went. I, I knew Adley from the 70s, who he worked with Can Dive, and I met, met him again down in Trinidad. He Is worked that, with me in Trinidad. Now, what were you doing in Trinidad? Diving. We were uh, on the, an oil rig there, and we, uh, we used to do beach standby. Now, what is that? Well, we'd be on the beach, and they would call us when they needed us. So the rest of the time, we were just having fun. <laughs> How long have you been diving for, Doug? Oh, since 1967. How did you get involved in it? Well, I always wanted to be a diver, and uh, I started off with um, going to a youth camp. And uh, the youth camp had uh, some diving tanks there. And as a junior counselor, we could grab the tanks and and start playing around underwater. And that's when I started in 1967. I joined the Navy and I wanted to be a Navy diver. Interesting. Now, Men of Honor, have you seen the show? Have. Uh, How straight to true to goods is the show when they throw that, all the in the water and stuff? That's true. It that, is, no that, kidding, that, eh? That, that, that was, uh, yeah. When they did the project, when he threw all the stuff in the water, go down and- Put it all together. Put it all together. And he was there for hours and cold and frustrated I bet because I mean that's what he did and now you've obviously you've done that yourself a bit of it yeah okay interesting yeah interesting and again through the Navy so how long were you in the Navy for four years well that's interesting hey I was on the HMS Bonaventure HMCS Bonaventure was an air Canada's aircraft last aircraft carrier that we had we had 12 12 and it was an anti-submarine airplane that would fly off the deck and they would drop sonar boys and look for submarines, Russian submarines and stuff like that. They were looking for Russians. Oh yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. The Russians are out there looking around. They figured, do you ever find one? Well, oh, yeah, I, I guess. Well, yeah. we, those days, the big Russian bear was a, one of their big bombers in that. They would fly over us and take pictures. Well, when we knew they were coming, all the hands would get out on the deck and Drop the drawers and give them the moon. Seriously? <laughs> yeah. Well, you only saw you only seen that <laughs> on television. No, I'm probably in. I'm probably in the KGB file there. <laughs> <There's> <laughs> the 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 yeah. Interesting. So, okay. And what else? Anything else happened? Oh, uh, we had. Uh, we've gone through a few storms and stuff like that. Yeah, and we 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 took the army on exercise where we filled up the whole flight deck with army vehicles and took them over. We lost four, um, four stokers, which are the marine engineers. They were in the aviation tank. They were cleaning out the aviation tank, and they went under inside the tanks, these big saddle tanks, and they uh, were overcome by aviation gas, and they perished on the bottom. We had to, as a diver, I was down there. We had to go and get their bodies out and stuff like that. And that was about the most tragic thing I've seen at that time. Does that bother you still, or? It, it, it did for a long time. Plus, we used to park under the bridge in, in Halifax, and then the, we used to have jumpers off the bridge. They would miss the flight deck, because we were underneath the flight deck. They would miss the flight deck, but in, in, up in the water and that. Then as divers, we'd have to go and try and find, find their bodies and stuff like that. We did a lot of body jobs. Is that right, eh? That, that must be... The, that was the worst, doing any body jobs. It's, and I got back in Canada here, with the, started commercial diving. A little bit easier, you still had to go look for bodies at commercial diving. Yeah. They just wouldn't, just would not let it go, hey? No. We, we did one in Canloops Lake, when they had an airplane crash, there was a, a four, or six, five, five people, I think it was, and landed in Canloops Lake and crashed, and we, Got the bodies out of there, and M Creek when the the bridge washed out, and they couple couple trucks pick up 
pickup trucks were in there stuck underneath the mud and whatever, and he yeah. went in there and got them out. Yeah. I tell you what, I, I tell you what, it's something that I don't know how I would deal with it. I don't know how I would deal with it until I had something I don't think I would like a whole bunch. It's, it's not a it's not a thing I like to, to do, dwell on. It's, it's not Yeah, that, it's and not saying fun. that, we'll move on to another subject. So you were in the Navy, you were there for five, four or five years. Four years. And you yeah. decided to take and become a commercial diver. Well, they now, made more money. <laughs> it's only cool. well, yeah, that's why they made more money, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, what did you get paid by the foot, the inch, or whatever? Well, it all depends what we were doing. We, it was the day rate was good. And what was the day rate back in the day? Well, when I started with Canada, it was $55 a day. <laughs> oh, no kidding. That's all we made. Yeah, $55 a day. Then we went up to $1,400 a month. Then uh, by the time I left, I was about, and I left in like uh, 2000 and. Uh, 11, uh, no, 11, yeah, 11 or 12, I was up to about $1,500 a day. Now the, now the boys in making, in SAT, they're making two grand, three grand a day. Now, what is SAT? Saturation is when um, you're living under pressure. For, and not with uh, your ex-wife, it's actually pressure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's not with the ex-wife. <laughs> that's pressure. Um, no, it's... um. When you're, you want to be on the bottom for a long time, they want you to continue to work. So you can go from seven days to 28 days under pressure, living in, an, in, a, in the atmosphere that you're working in. You're traveling back and forth with a diving bell up to the deck, transferring into a living quarters, which is under pressure. Your decompression chamber? Decompression, Decompression chamber. chamber. Yeah, yeah. Now, do you go? Do you walk outside and then into, or do you just right from one capsule into another capsule with a vacuum yeah, you, lock or you, something? You make you make up. You made on. You, you made on. So there's no there's no there's no, there's no, there's no around. No. What happens if you get into the atmosphere for that well, yeah, minute or two? You'll end up in uh, dying. You can. It's as simple as that. You simple just way. die. Yeah. What do you just body the nitrogen just explodes in your body or? Exactly right. Exactly what happens. So you're living a bell for like thirty days. Well. No, you're working out of the bell, but you're living in a chamber. In the decompression chamber for like 20, 30 days. That's right. Now, is that where you picked up? I know that you do a little bit of magic and stuff. What are you doing there all this time? You magic? What do you write? A read, book? Look? Read, do a lot of reading. Do a lot of reading, a lot of storytelling. Nice. Every, and you're all talking in helium, with helium voices. So like this kind of? That's yeah, the no one. Day. That's the one. <laughs> you get yeah. arguing and fighting in there, or is everybody pretty tired? You must have some uh, conflict in there once in a while. No, nah, you don't want it. You're in a fine, complete, uh, confined area. You're in 400 cubic foot space. I mean, it's very, very small, seven foot by. And how many people in there? Uh, when we when we first started off, we we only had three in SAT. Now they 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 go up to twelve people in SAT. Well they get a little bit bigger building in there, oh, I don't think. They now. got big, big chambers now and off boats and that in the North Sea and stuff like that. Here's a question, Doug. When you're down there all this time when you're diving suit, when you gotta go to the bathroom, I take it you don't drink a whole lot of water before you go oh, down there? No, well and you it, just it, you it, just it, in there to fill up your boot or so, what? Yeah. It's just, <laughs> it's just hot water. You put you are in a hot water suit so all you're doing is mixing it with the water and it's coming out it's coming out of your suit. Inside the chamber we have no, no. actual toilets in that. So when you're in your suit, where does it vents out the bottom or something? Uh, it'll vent through the suit eventually. Interesting. Or when you get it to the surface, a little bit it. wet in there, eh? Yeah, a little bit. It smells just like <laughs> when you get out, eh? Yeah, that's why. Yeah. I to... guess taking a <laughs> you'd want to take and wait till you probably come up or what? I wouldn't want to <laughs> in the suit because <laughs> you got people on the surface that are attending you and they're helping you, right? And they don't want to mess with somebody that just. I don't think so. Now, we're taking that's a tethered dive. You got you got an umbilical cord going up to the surface, which is in the bell going up to the surface, and in the bell you have an excursion umbilical. Now, is that kind of like this piece here? It would is, uh, it would have hot water communication hose attached to it, and it would all Tele be just yeah, television line attached to it. Now, that's a glycol cooled suit or heated suit or whatever it no, may be. No, it's hot water. Just hot water, it's eh? Just hot water. And it pumps like it. Now, I don't understand. Does it go, it goes right onto your body or does it go between it, a liner? It goes in, well, you, you, you wear like a small liner inside or woolies or whatever. And uh, it's, you, you 
Your temperature is regulated at the surface. And so now, does the water physically touch you? Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, you can get burned if, you, if you're not careful, if the water's too hot or it's too cold. I still think going to the bathroom. I didn't think it was that dangerous going to the bathroom. Yeah, you don't want your balls to go, go, go out. The, go out the. That's why well, you got to think. You know, the toilet bowl, sometimes round, right? Yeah. Well, you don't want a round one. You want to at least have a split somewhere. It'll suck your nuts right out. No <laughs> sh <laughs> Yeah, it's an old lot of shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, you hear stories about, oh, this happened somewhere in, in North Sea right, eh? or in Africa or something. But uh, the day I blew up that guy's, the, it was on the Ned drill. It was a drill ship. Okay. And we plumbed it in, we plumbed it in. <laughs> And I blew up the captain's, not the captain's, but the, the toilet down, down there. I wasn't, wasn't too, I wasn't too popular. You too popular. <laughs> As we go back a little bit, how I ended up kind of getting to know, I get to know uh, uh, Reimer first. Yeah. And Pat, and I got to know him, and we were talking one day at the restaurant, because the other divers used to come to Fort St. John, and they would dive in the acid tailing pond yeah. with their glycol cool, glycol cool suits or whatever it may be in the tailing ponds. Yeah, they would, they would use a, a dry suit, what they would classify as a dry suit, and then they stay warm by bulking up with woolly sawn. Okay, because I know that they had some kind of cooling in it too going in the acid ponds. Yeah, some, so, some of them, the water is so hot that they, they would have to, we did a couple jobs in the Arctic where the water was so hot, it was coming out of the, the bottom was so hot that we'd have to be cooled off with a... Now, why was the water coming? Close to a volcanic crack or something, or what? Uh, I'm not really sure. It was uh, something to do with the, the drilling operations that they... Oh, you are the drilling rig when you were doing this? Yeah. Okay. Did, you did a lot of drilling stuff? Oh, yeah. Uh, like yeah. lots, eh? Yeah, quite a bit. I was on the East Coast. We did a 728-foot sat. I ran the first 728-foot sat out there in the, on the East Coast of Canada. Ever? Did it be done? Yeah, well... In Canada, at the time, was the, one of the deepest dives we did. Interesting. Again, kind of moving back and forth a little bit. Going to the bathroom kind of always, I don't know why that always kind of intrigues everybody, but it's kind of a body function. If you're on space, you do it in a tube, in a vacuum and stuff. Now, in a decompression chamber, supposedly it's a bit different too. How do you go to the bathroom in a decompression chamber? Well, they have, you have the same type of a toilet, but th this time you need permission. You have to... Top side, can I have a chamber flush, a uh, toilet flush? So what happens, you go to the bathroom, and there's a valve. You have to have a guy on the outside, and a guy on the, and then you're on the inside. So when the guy on the outside says, oh, he's ready, you're ready to flush, he, you open your valve, he opens his valve, and it's flushed out. If not, it would... Uh, go the other direction. <laughs> well, you don't want to go... <laughs> you don't want to lose pressure. <laughs> You gotta make sure you close that, close your valve so the pressure inside's not going out, losing the uh, in, in, internal pressure. It's going like that. Yeah, and you gotta make sure your hose is somewhere or where you're dumping it. It's going. <laughs> yeah, 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 you're taking a feet. I blew up two toilets once. <laughs> yeah, seriously. How did On you do that? Ship. Well, we had it plumbed into the ship's uh, toilet system. And it took all the pressure from the chamber <laughs> when I went in there. Listen, <laughs> 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 right off the base. <laughs> if there's a pressure differential where the pressure oh. on the inside and, and there's nothing on the outside, and you open the, you could. It's the same as getting the bends off because yeah. you get a shot so of the pressure differential. So you get a shot right away that yeah. you get the bends from taking a, take a crap, get the bends and die. That's why. You, you have a valve on the inside and there's one on the outside. So, and it's controlled. It's interesting how we take for granted something so simple and it's yet so complicated and possibly yeah. can end your happiness. Oh yeah. Yeah. You don't want that to happen.